Hello, and welcome to the Community IT Innovators Technology Topics Podcast, where we discuss nonprofit technology, cybersecurity, tech project implementation, strategic planning, and nonprofit IT careers. Find us at communityit.com. Thank you for joining Community IT for this podcast, part one. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating to help others find this leadership resource for nonprofits. Listen for part two in your podcast feed. Welcome to the Community IT webinar about using a skills matrix at your nonprofit. So have you used a skills matrix before in your in IT change management? Do you know super users, early adapters, your champions, your ambassadors? Um, do you know who usually needs maybe a little extra training and review when you're rolling out a new technology tool? So who is maybe even tech phobic? And how can you make your IT rollout successful for all of your users and get them the skills that they need to be able to use your new tool? So my name is Carolyn Woodard. I'm the Outreach Director for Community IT, and I will be the moderator today. I'm very happy to hear from our guest, Heather Ritchie from Build Consulting, about this IT management tool and change management tool. So if you've never used a skills matrix before, you've come to the right place. And first, I'm going to go over our learning objectives. So today, after our program, we hope that you will be able to learn what a skills matrix is, understand the steps to create an IT skills matrix with your staff, explore the benefits and challenges to creating and using an IT skills matrix, learn tactics and strategies to roll out IT changes to all staff in using examples. We're going to, Heather is going to give us some good examples. All right, so Heather, I'm very excited to welcome you to your first webinar with Community IT. So would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, hi, thank you. I'm Heather Ritchie and I'm a consultant at Build. I've enjoyed working with nonprofits for over 20 years and have served in a variety of roles from communications to technology to executive director. I've led change management efforts in a variety of sectors and served as an educator, professional development specialist and leadership coach. Um, my personal and professional experience keep revealing to me um, that communication is a foundation for success. And the same applies to leveraging technology. At Build, we know that improving use of technology and implementing new systems requires careful communications and the enablement of the people using the systems. We have also seen and know that nonprofits, as well as others right now, are experiencing faster and greater rates of change for technology and for people transitioning. So today, I'm super excited to talk about how to support individuals and teams and explore balancing their skills, their competencies, and their interests. I know not all organizations or departments have explored something like this and would encourage everybody to try it. I'm passionate about investing in our people and believe by doing so, we can really build the better teams and have greater impact. So super excited to be here. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you for, for coming. And would you tell us a little bit more about Build Consulting? Sure. Uh, Build is a technology consulting firm focused solely on nonprofits. Um, Build believes in technology. Change is more than changing the tools. It includes the strategy, the people, the leadership, change management, support. Um, we're experienced at leading nonprofits through technology projects from assessments to implementations with deep data, information, technology, and everyday experience. And before we begin the rest of our program, I'll tell you a little bit more about Community IT if you're not familiar with us. We are a 100% employee-owned managed services provider. So we provide outsourced IT support. We work exclusively with nonprofit organizations also. And our mission is to help nonprofits accomplish their missions through the effective use of technology. We are big fans of what well-managed IT can do for your nonprofit. We serve nonprofits across the United States, and we've been doing this for over 20 years. 
Uh, we are technology experts. We are consistently given MSP 501 recognition for being a top MSP, and that is an honor we received again in 2024. So I want to remind everyone for these presentations, community IT is vendor agnostic. So we only make recommendations to our clients and only based on their specific business needs. We never try to get a client into a product because we get an incentive or a benefit from that. But we do consider ourselves a best of breed IT provider. So it's our job to know the landscape, what tools are available, reputable and widely used. And we make recommendations on that basis for our clients based on their business needs, priorities, and budgets. And today we're mostly going to be talking about Excel. So it may be something that you all already have. But in general, when we talk about tools in our presentation, they're, they're just one tool that you can use. So Heather, I think uh, you're going to take it over and tell us what is an IT skills matrix and what is the purpose? Sure. Let's explore why organizations and IT departments should use a skills matrix. And with this is framed around IT departments, it can be for any department in a nonprofit. So I just want to note that. Um, but for IT departments, uh, the purpose and usefulness of engaging in a skills matrix framework with your team, whether as a leader or a colleague, includes optimizing team performance. And so what we mean by this is seeing if you are leveraging your team member's skills most effectively, um, planning for future training and development. How are we supporting the team as new technologies are added, as interests change, identifying skills or competency gaps? One of the top competencies of 2024 is being customer service oriented. If your team is a group of introverts that have not really had to interact a lot directly with staff, how can you help support them in growing that competency? Or number four, considering team composition. When a team member leaves, this is an opportunity to discuss what skills the team needs. Have the needs of the team or the organization changed or are they the same? Are there team members that have the ability to fill in some skills and you could hire for some other skills. Another instance, we've worked with a number of nonprofits that had IT departments that were focused on help desk and hardware support models. And these organizations might have transitioned to using an MSP. And so now the IT staff that are in-house, they need more expertise in enterprise and application um, software focused on support for the users and the organization. That's a different set of skills from the model they were staffed for. And so how can we have that conversation to support one another and build our teams? So at its core, the purpose of a skills framework is to strengthen your teams and consider how you build collaborative spaces. It's a conversation starter. It's a way to look at data and discuss it. Uh, to borrow from Daniel Pink, a writer on the changing nature of the workplace, after adequate pay, employees really need three intrinsic elements to motivate them and be successful. One of them is autonomy, the ability to make choices about their time and their tasks. Another is purpose, being part of something larger than ourselves, which when you're in a nonprofit, a lot of times that mission is really driving us. And then the third one is mastery, and that's really what connects to the skills matrix. Mastery is the desire to continually improve at something that matters. Um, he says it's the love, humans love to get better at stuff. If I'm in my job and I don't have opportunity to get better and grow, then I'm probably going to look at other things that I can do. Um, and so this idea of mastery and how we support our team members and our colleagues and our to support the organization is really where the skills matrix conversation can come in. I'm hoping what you all leave here today is with is that investing in knowing and understanding your people and teams at a more holistic level really provides an opportunity to support team morale, skills, and performance. And so Carolyn, yep, thank you. Um, so now let's broadly look at what it is, and then we're going to show you an example of a skills matrix. So broadly, a skills matrix is the framework for reflecting on job skills, competencies, and interests. 
Um, the skills, what we're referencing there is things you've learned in the field, data visualization, user support and troubleshooting, database design. Uh, competencies are broader. They may be a little bit more innate skills, but they're still skills that you can develop. Um, great. Are you a great problem solver? How do you feel about public speaking? Do you work well in teams? Or are you a really good individual contributor? And then the next area are the interests. Areas people might be curious or have a desire in investing time and developing. And part of this conversation is, hey, you know, employee one really wants to invest time in this area. And another employee is also interested. So maybe we pair people up. Or employee three is not interested in that topic and can kind of do a divide and conquer so that we can all have the content knowledge that is being developed. So these three areas are what we want to look at to identify where individuals and teams are strong and where they have growth areas, as well as where the team may need additional support to fulfill the organization's needs. Uh, the way this is laid out, it can be in a spreadsheet or a chart, and we're going to show a little bit about data visualization with it. And so I can go ahead and take over if you'd like, Carolyn. Sure. That sounds great. So this, I think this slide is the um, example of the generic template, which is available on the build consulting website, which is buildconsulting.com. And I'll share that link with everyone. But I think, Heather, you're going to go ahead and share um, the different tabs. Yes, I got super excited. So I made an example one <laughs> for our webinar today. And so you may be thinking, like, how am I going to use this skills matrix? How do I step into it? So the first place you can start is compiling the list of skills and competencies. And the reason why this is the first step is not every team or department is going to need the same skills um, or competencies. And so you can survey your organization, have anecdotal conversations with people. You can just talk to the team and brainstorm, or you could use our sample skills list to get started to kind of say, hey, what do we think we really need to talk about as a team, as our core functionality for this organization? Um, is project management something that we really need to lean into? Is um, database management something? Um, what does it look like? And so if you look at this chart, so here's the categories and here's the skills. This is not a comprehensive list. This is what I would say is your starter list if you if you use our template. Um, and you can, you're looking at the categories, which you're going to see repeated here. And then you're looking at the skills that might go along with it that an individual might be responding to. In addition to the sample skills, We've listed some sample competencies. So again, these are those more innate ones that like team collaboration and interpersonal skills, effective communication, um, time management and organization. These are things that some people are innately good at and other people can develop. So you would take those that you brainstormed, that you've said, hey, this is what our department needs to evaluate and assess across our team and our individuals. And I'm going to encourage you to start by having an individual fill in their own inventory. And this is one way you could set up the inventory. Um, the idea here is that I, as the employee, would fill it in. One way you could have this process done is you would also have um, the leadership fill in and then you can compare or you can just have the individual fill it in and then have a discussion about it with the individual. And so I might look at, am I a big picture thinker and say, mm, you know what, I'm that's not something I'm super great at. Um, am I interested in developing that skill? Yes, I am totally interested. And so what you'll see over here is we have a key and it goes from not proficient to very proficient and not interested to very interested. These could be different. You could make these fun. Uh, you could make these, I've seen this being like awareness levels versus novice versus professional versus expert. 
Um, you know, interest key could be not interested, no way, Jose, you know, somewhat interested, eh, maybe, um, you know, super excited. So you can have fun with this as well. Um, and so you would note your proficiency and your interest and do the same here for your help desk support. If I'm in the role in IT that does some of this work, I might say, I'm okay at it. I could get better. Um, but I'm really great at doing this other skill. And one of the pieces of information that we really need to communicate to anybody filling these in is the idea is not that I'm going to come out of it going, hey, I'm the best at everything and I'm interested in everything. We really want to have kind of this honest conversation in space of like, where can I grow and what am I interested in? Because we don't want people being stuck doing things that they're not interested in for long periods of time that doesn't help either the organization or the individual. And so once this is filled in, um, then you get this really colorful employee uh, inventory. So the idea would have been that you would have talked to the employee, you would have all had a conversation with each of these six employees, and then you would bring them together. If you can, I would encourage everybody having their name on it, it adds to the transparency and just the depth of conversation that you can have. But if on the first pass, it really needs to be, you know, employee one to employee six and make it anonymous, so be it. You can still have a great conversation. So part of what this is, is looking at what you see in the data. And so what you might notice here at a glance is that employee one and two, they feel really good about how they do help desk support. And you have some employees that don't feel as strong in that. And then you have a couple employees over here that feel really strong in database management. Um, and then you have some that are not so great at it from their own, how they feel about where they are in that right now. Or they just feel that they're at the novice level and they could really grow into the next level. So that's the conversation you can have here is just noting what your team has and where the strength and growth areas are. And then you might move over to interests and say, okay, wow, what do I see from what interest levels there are? And at a glance, I really see right off the bat that there's a lot of people interested in developing their skills in database management. And if we go back here, I know I have some experts in database management. So we might have internal capacity to do some training and development, or we might need to see if there's other people, if there's another skill. Um, I'll also note that like IT project management, we have, according to this, based on discussions, one person that's really strong at this skill. And then when I go over to interest, I see, oh, look, there's somebody else who really wants to develop this skill. So if I need a backup person, Maybe we start pairing these people together to develop this skill set. So this is talking about how you can support your team members, helping them grow, helping them live into that idea of mastery and being supported for their work. We also might want to take this and take these summary levels over here and look at them from an organizational perspective. So if I'm here, I'm looking at Maybe we did a survey. Maybe this is anecdotal. Um, I have some, you know, charting I did from interviews. But it looks like right now the organization is telling me that help desk support is somewhat help. Is is It doesn't say whether it's helpful or not, but it's somewhat needed or prioritized. But what they're really needing or feeling like they could use more of is some data analysis and business intelligence. And so we can see that data point from what the organization has said. And then we want to come over and look at our team skills proficiency. And we're at 22%. Not bad. But if this is at 40 and this is at 22, we could say, well, do we need to grow that area? Have that conversation. It might spark some more interest in this area. And then I might look down here at team interests and see, well, we had the least amount of interest in growing that area. So what does that mean? If we do feel that that is a priority, do
do we have a conversation to see if somebody might grow into that area? Or do we say, hey, we really need additional staffing to support this work? And sure, um, Norma, this um, organizational support, this might be a survey that you've done with the full organization. Or if you know that a specific department is feeling like, they need more IT support and you're trying to figure out what um, what that support need is. A short survey might do that. A conversation, a focus group with that group might do that as well. I could see you might talk to managers or directors mm -hmm. also and just take, you know, kind of that pulse if they know what their strategic planning is, where do they see gaps and where do they know their team needs to um, gain some more skills. Mm -hmm. And so this might be in the form of a chart. I did it here to kind of show how you could look at it against other charts. It might be that you just have these top five items that have come up by talking to people in your organization and seeing if that aligns with where your proficiency and interests are with the team. And I've seen this done where you have single teams or departments doing this. I've also seen this done where every department does it. And so you're looking at global skills for the organization. So there's a variety of ways to utilize doing a skills matrix, um, the team building aspect and having everybody look at the strengths of your team is really a great opportunity. I know you're going to talk a little bit more about this later, but I want to say in this context, we're talking about maybe IT change management. You're rolling out a new tool that a lot of people are going to be using. Are you talking about your IT strategy? So you've put in here these categories based on that type of a scenario, but I could see this tool just being useful in lots of different scenarios where you just want to know, you know, like I said earlier, who's good at Excel you know, or, or, you know, kind of who's great at word, you know, those types of things as well. And as we're moving forward too, like who's really good at writing AI, AI props, or mm -hmm. who's really good at, you know, using a new tool that everybody's interested in. So I could see that as well. Yes. It's like partially looking at your knowledge center within the organization and who within your organization or department or team you can go to as well as, who else might align with your interests to kind of grow a skill. So it's a great way to just see the people more holistically in your organization. So I wanna say again that this, uh, the template, a plain template without all of these things filled in is available on the buildconsulting.com website. Um, and I'll have that also in the transcript. Um, but I wondered if anyone, before we move on, um, had any questions for Heather about the way she's showing you this um, spreadsheet and the different tabs that she's put together. So you can put those in the, the chat if you have them. And I'll note also the template notes how to use it and gives instructions. This is meant to be used within departments with colleagues and leadership. It's not meant to be used kind of from an HR perspective to look into the team. Um, that's the way we're talking about it today is like, this is a way for everybody to grow and explore together. And it's a really fun um, activity in a lot of ways when people try to do it. That's great. Okay. Um, our next, uh, I'm going to put in the chat here before um, Heather share some more examples and how you would go about using this tool and who the stakeholders are. If you want to put in chat, um, how do you think that you could use this tool? And if you see any challenges um, that you might face, and I am going to start sharing again. There we go. So this, this is the, the chat question. Um, some opportunities um, where this could be useful. If, you, if this presentation is getting you thinking about some things, we wanna help people share with each other um, some ideas of where you could see using this um, or you know, some challenges that you could foresee maybe with your team or the way your organization works. Um, 
So some people have some questions coming in. How would you implement this tool? We're about, we're gonna talk about that on the next slide. So um, what does the forward facing part of the matrix look like for staff filling it out? I think you mentioned that a little bit, Heather, that you might do that as a survey. So it could be done in a number of ways. Um, you could pull out the actual Excel page tab and send it individually to people. You could create a survey and have the survey results pull out into Excel. There's a, I think the extent to which you feel like you want to be able to manipulate the data is going to really drive how you format the tool. Um, and if you have tech challenged staff, of course, you would want to make it the easiest possible. You, like you might even put it in an email to them and have them just email it back and then you would input it. So it really depends on your, your vibe at your office. Um, so the next question is challenges. So we may have experts in X or Y, but time constraints might not allow them to teach others. So that's a really good example of something that might be a challenge um, once you've put this gra graph together of just acknowledging time constraints on people and also acknowledging those kind of feelings and fears. Like someone might be worried about putting in that they're really good at something if they're like, then I'm gonna get this extra job of teaching everybody else how to do Excel or whatever it is. Um, this is a really great one for you, Heather. How do you ensure the accuracy of the self ratings? The accuracy of the self ratings. <laughs> I think what this is coming out of is like, whether I might say like, oh, I'm super great at this and maybe I'm more of a novice or um, maybe the other way though is maybe I am super great at it, but I'm also very uh, critical of myself and I'm like, no, I'm really not that great at it. Um, I think the part for the accuracy of the self ratings is really that dialogue with the leadership that you're doing this with, or if this is done, because this could be done just collaboratively, a group of colleagues or a project team saying like, hey, let's see what our knowledge base is. Um, and so at that point, um, I might look at Carolyn and be like, Carolyn, I saw what you did with Excel the other day. You're amazing. Like those types of dialogues can help with the accuracy of the self ratings. Yeah, and we're going to talk a little bit later about implementing it, but you could do this as a team exercise, a group exercise. So on a Zoom call or if you're in an office in the same office room and just fill it out together instead of doing it individually. Um, and that could help your team as well. Kind of the next person mentioned um, as this is a good way to help clarify what we want or need and who might be able to meet the needs. And I think particularly in a nonprofit or philanthropy um, example, like we're often working as teams, like you said earlier, something bigger than yourself. So working toward the mission and everything that you can do to strengthen your organization strengthens your ability to meet that mission. So that's a, we're already coming from a good space is what I would say. Thank you for joining Community IT for this podcast, part one. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating to help others find this leadership resource for nonprofits. Listen for part two in your podcast feed. Community IT does these free webinars and podcasts for our community, and we love sharing our knowledge and experience. If you have more questions or are having trouble with your IT at your nonprofit, please get in touch with us on our website, www.communityit.com, so we can start a conversation or schedule an assessment. Downloading any of our free resources there will get you signed up for our webinar reminders, and you can attend our next webinar in real time and ask our experts your own questions. If you love podcasts, please subscribe and leave us a rating to help others find this leadership resource for nonprofits.